Hey guys, it's your girl Jalicia, and today I just want to talk. Before I get started, let's all side eye the guy outside with the lawnmower or hedge cutter or weed, weed, weed whacker, whatever that is, because clearly he don't get that I am in here recording, okay? I'm gonna need you to take it two steps back. I want to talk, because you know, I like when we get to know each other, and girl, you know, she got story for days. So I want to tell you guys this one story. And it's very monumental into my life and what helped me look at things in a different light. Okay, I was, I believe I was 19 or 20, and me and a group of my friends went to the club. Sidebar, it's a group of friends that I'm no longer friends with, and you'll see by the end of the story. Okay, so me and my friends, we's in the club, we getting it, boom, 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 we do what I do. You know how we do when we get in the club, girls. And this drag queen type guy was in the club as well. Now, I didn't see him at first. My friend saw them and they was laughing and, and carrying on. You know how, I can roll my eyes. You know how people do when they see, you know, people that's outside the norm. They make fun of gay people. They make fun of Chinese. They just do. So they started laughing. And of course, because I obviously was not grown up enough, I was laughing as well because he had these rundown shoes on and he was not in a transition. I mean, he just looked like Joe Torre put a dress on and a wig. Like, literally, no makeup, just red lip. Like, it was just a hot mess, whatever the case may be. But he was looking a mess. Everybody in the club was teasing and laughing this guy, including myself. It was just ridiculous. And looking back on it, it was had to have been so humiliating for him. But I was cracking my ass off. I'm just, you know, if I check everybody else, I got to check myself. I was dead wrong, but I was laughing my ass off. So he was in there with his little friends and, you know, they got into it with a few people and I guess they decided to leave. I don't know. After I laughed for 10 minutes, I moved on to something else to laugh at, okay? All right. So this is where the story starts getting interesting. Now, he's gone, okay? It's the end of the night. We're leaving. I know you guys know I don't drink. So I'm stupid hot at this point. So all my friends drunk, I don't drink. So I'm always a designated driver. And I be telling them like, do you don't see the driving while bus commercial? <laughs> so we're in the parking lot. Now, mind you, I told you how we were all laughing hysterically at this guy, right? Okay. We're going to call him Jerome for the sake of the meeting. So you, I told you how we were all laughing at Jerome because Jerome was a man in the dress. All right. So, I'm in the parking lot, which we're leaving now, whatever the case may be. We six deep. So, it's four in the back, two of us in the front. So, we're driving out the parking lot. There's a commotion, like, on the other side of the club. But where we were parked at, the parking lot, you had to go around and, like, go around the back of the club to leave. So, obviously, there was traffic. Okay, so as the cars are going up, because they're not, it's not bumper to bumper. They're just, people are slowing down to rub a neck, you know, to look and see what's going on. So, you know, we did the sign. So, we're driving up, and I see, I see Jerome on the floor, like, on his back, and four men, like, jumping and beating him up, like, beating him down. I'm talking about for life. And his three friends are on the side, like, in the back of him, trying to pull them off, but they're screaming. They're, it's girls. They're actually girls. So they cannot get these men off of them. Now, mind you, I told you the traffic was backed up, right? So 11 people had passed and saw this, laughed and everything and kept driving. But you know, Captain Saber Hill couldn't do that right. I couldn't. I really couldn't because I just, something in me, I just cannot deal with stuff like that. Now, mind you, we all calculated at this motherfucker, right? So I stopped the car. I jump out. No. I can't fight no man, but I'm going to do something. So I jump out. It's a piece of plywood on the floor. Yes, girl. You know, the clubs in the South, it's like barnyard style clubs summertime. It's not actually a building per se. So it was like wood. So God, I picked up the plywood. Blam! On the back of the one boy back. He fell off. Everybody looking at me. So at this time, they stop. Jerome jumps up and takes the opportunity and darts it. Hits it to the highway, right? He's running, he's running, he's running. So, everybody's looking at me. So, I'm going off at this point. I'm going ape shit. I'm like, who the fuck y'all can get it? Y'all want I'm going off. Now, mind you, it's three men. I done hit one with the plyboard. And that shit was heavy too. I got me a splinter, by the way. 
But I hit him with it to get him off of them. And so now they looking at me. So now three of them in my face. I guess because I'm just a female. I don't know what the bouncers were thinking. But the bouncers intervened. So the guys didn't touch me. Fuck them pussy ass niggas, okay? At this point. But they, I didn't get hit. But I was able to hit them. And allow Jerome to run away. So they pushing me in my car saying, go. You know, people talking shit. You need to mind her business. All this extra stuff. But you know, I'm in the car. I drive off. So what y'all think I do? With my five friends in the car. Mm-hmm. I go find Jerome. I sure did. So I drove around like the little block. I see Jerome like running. You know, clothes all ripped up, bloody, all this stuff. So I stopped. Now, mind you, we six deep. I did squeeze Jerome in the car. I did. Now, mind you, I don't know him. He could have killed me. He could have, you know, started the whole fight. He could have pulled out a gun. You don't know what could have happened. But I picked him up because I felt bad, okay? Anyway. So I picked Jerome up. I'm like, I'm like, are you okay? He's like, leave me alone. I saw you and your friends up. And like, he just going back and forth with me. I'm like, you know, I'm sorry. Are you okay? I'll give you a ride home. So Jerome actually happened to live like four blocks from me. What's the chances, right? My friends is over it, okay? All of them bitches is cussing me out. They mad. They got attitudes. They ain't speaking to Jerome. They in the car sliding over, acting like he got fucking AIDS. Like all this kind of ignorant shit that I just cannot deal with. So I'm over it in the driver's seat. So I dropped them hoes off first. So I dropped them off and I don't think I've ever seen them since that night. Like literally I stopped talking to all of them because I just didn't like how they treated that man. I am not the type of person to ever treat anybody, whether you have a terminal disease or not. You could have leprosy, you could have psoriasis, you could have all those things. I don't make people feel like I don't want to touch them, even though I'm human. Sometimes I be like, hey, I don't want to touch them. But you don't make people feel like, I just don't like that kind of shit. And this guy just, this guy just got his ass whooped, right? I mean whooped. And they, I just did not like that, okay? So I cussed them out, I dropped them off. Come to find out, not only is Jerome my neighbor, per se, he went to school with me because I went to the college in Jacksonville. He only dressed in, you know, his drag, per se, on the weekends. I, he just had so much things going for him. He had a bad, like, childhood. He was disowned by his parents because he came out. Like, all these things, and I'm just sitting there talking to this man. I'm literally crying at this point because I feel bad. And at that moment, I realized, honest to God, that I had to change my ways because I was just like all them people in the club. I was laughing my ass off. I was reading him. I was doing the words. You know how we do when we in the club and we feel like it's okay and that whole pack mentality? I was a part of that. But to see all the adversity that this man has gone through, okay? had been going through, was ongoing. He got his ass whooped for coming out the club. Like, I just cannot live with that. Needless to say, me and Jerome are still friends. He moved to California. If you're watching this, hey, boo. We, ha we were friends, I think, like I said, I was like 20 years old. I'm 35 now. We've known each other that long. He is such a good person. He's come out. He has a, a living boyfriend. He's doing well. He does not have AIDS. Like, all this, he's just healthy and well. And I got to say this, Jerome has been a better friend to me than any one of those bitches that was in the car. You understand what I'm saying? Because you never know who the person is, what their story is, what they're going through, who they know, all that stuff. I mean, you just never know. And I, you guys already know I am Captain Saver Ho. I've been Captain Saver Ho since I was born. It's just how I am. I think because my aunt and my grandmother were like that too. They would not let somebody go hungry or sleep on the street. I just was raised that way. I just can't deal with that. And let me tell you something. I felt guilty. And I still kind of feel guilty now I'm telling you the story. Because y'all know how I get down. So you know I was going in. Okay? And just to see that outcome and how that story changed. Like it really impacted my life. I think that's why I'm also so susceptible to the LGBT community and always feel like I have to defend them or stand up for them or whatever the case may be. And in my own personal life, because I have, you know, lesbian and gay friends, homosexual and trying that I've been friends with since I was in like the fourth grade. Hey, booze, y'all know who I'm talking about. And we still get it into this day. Like, I love them. I just, I... I think maybe because as a child, I felt like a loner and I felt like no one defended me. That, along with my grandmother and aunts being so caring and, and considerate to other people's feelings, it 
it raised me to be very, very tolerant and considerate and be able to put myself in other people's shoes and really see and feel what they're going through. Now, I know you're like, what's the point? Why do you tell me this story? I told this story to say, most of the time when you're not part of the solution, you are part of the problem. And if you're one of those people that continuously sit back, and this is not for just LGBT community, this is when you see somebody being bullied, when you see old people getting pushed out the way, anything. Like, it's our responsibility to do something. Now, I'm not saying go whoop somebody ass, especially if you cannot hey, fight. But I am saying you have a voice and you are able to use that voice. And we all need to make a change to make life better for someone else, not just ourselves. Think about if you go around your life hating, 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 and your child ends up gay. Imagine what kind of karma you already put forth for that child. Like people need to take that kind of stuff into consideration and I definitely do. But I wanted to share this story just to let you know you never ever know how small or big you can impact somebody's life and if that little voice is telling you to do the right thing i urge and implore you to do the right thing um each one teach one is a philosophy that i do live by and i also feel that we are responsible for paying it forward so hopefully you get something from this story hopefully me doing something encourages you to do something as small as writing a blog telling someone hello, not treating someone like an outcast. All these things are important. So I just want to share this story. This story really came about because about two weeks ago, I, I saw people on YouTube like going in on gays. And then I went on Twitter and they were like going back and forth. And I'm just sick of that. Like in 2014, if you don't like homosexual people, something's wrong with you because they're here, they're queer. And what we gonna do? Like get it together. Now, I know this video was a lot more serious than I usually give you guys, but I hope you see that it was for a reason that I told this story. I definitely hope you were entertained and, and got something from it. And if you have a story that you also would like to share about a changing moment, about when you spoke up for someone, when you helped someone, when someone did that for you, leave it down below because I'm sure it will inspire others to get the courage to do that. All right? Thank you guys so much for all your love and support. You always come hair and take care of your girl and I definitely do not want to go unappreciated, okay? If you're interested in this makeup look, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I do have a tutorial for it so it'll be available. If it's not already available, it'll be available within the next couple days, all right? Peace out. She works hard for the comments so you better hit that like.